Hey folks, Josephine Sabora here. As I previously reviewed the new remake of Dumbo that was directed by Tim Burton. Yes, which had Colin Farrell, Danny DeVito, Michael Keaton, Eva Green, and Alan Arkin all come to mind. Why not review the original Dumbo? Yes, Dumbo, the semi anthropomorphic flying elephant yeah with the help here of Timothy or Mouse yeah right there <laughs> and of course this is the uh, the Rainmaster right there this is the uh, Big Top Edition DVD release from 2006 when I got this uh, at um, Best Buy or I think yeah I think I got this at Best Buy a long time ago but it was definitely worth the price it has all the features on the back right here yeah it has uh, everything that's included um, in this particular case <laughs> yeah it has the um, okay hold on it has the uh, the Magic Game uh, cards, which I'm not going to use anyway, I'm just going to keep them. And just has the uh, the scene selection, but comes with the DVD as we speak. But that's all I got at, at the time when I bought this. Uh, one time ago. Okay, just put the slip cover back into the DVD. And there you go. <laughs> yeah. There is a Blu-ray release that came out back in 2011 or 2010, I believe. But it was supposed to come out that year. But it just came out later, just to celebrate its 70th anniversary. It got re-released uh, in 2016 for its 75th anniversary. I don't have the Blu-ray though, but hopefully someday maybe I might take a chance at it. But I'm fine with this release for now. I mean, even though the new release did actually have the features that might not be included on this release alone, but it does have the rest of the features from the Big Top Edition. Dumbo's been very popular ever since this movie came out on October 23, 1941 which was during the World War II that's happening. Yeah, especially um, the bombing of Pearl Harbor that follows after this movie came out. Yeah, it was going on. And so they were hoping that later on Time Magazine would actually uh, do a cover on Dumbo. You know, try to focus on, on Disney's fourth animated feature and this is the only feature that's only lasted for 64 minutes yeah RKO Radio Pictures uh, is a distributor for the Disney films that they put out you know before uh, Renda Vista came along this was Disney's own distributor you know before they changed its name um, back in 2006 I believe or 7 um, anyway <laughs> so they made it up after um, their previous film Fantasia that was their third film was trying to um, recuperate the profit that happened yeah so now this one became very successful had a lot of merchandising that was going around you know I mean think about it they started uh, dedicating it to to Dumbo like we had Dumbo Circus that was on the Disney Channel we had a lot of books uh, they had theme attractions for for Disneyland and Walt Disney World and the fact that they even had video games and and all this other stuff of course live-action adaptation that I just Previously reviewed, so on. 
I mean, it was very popular. I mean, no one will ever forget uh, the flying elephant like Dumbo. Of course, it did have controversy that was going around. I mean, granted, it did actually had the strike that was going on um, during the production when they were making this movie. And so they had to continue to go on trying to um, complete the animation before it's ready. Also, RKO was trying to find, like, maybe a movie or short to to put together with Dumbo. Like they wanted to put a B movie on there. Yeah, that would be pretty weird to, to put that along with Dumbo. So plus they even wanted to do some editing for the film. But they couldn't do it because Disney refused to use all these options. So they decided they'll just release it on its own. Although sometimes they can actually put some other shorts to join in. And yes, I'm just going to mention it. There was a controversy involving the crows in in the movie, yeah, in the movie, mostly because the crows themselves were black stereotypes. They thought they were going to take them out of the film later on. <laughs> but uh, actress Whoopi Goldberg decided that she wanted this to be accepted because this was part of the movie and plus it had the most famous song of them all. When I see an elephant fly. Yeah, that song. <laughs> which also that song did feature in Operation Dumble Drop. Yeah, which that movie was just uh, a whole different uh, story. <laughs> yeah, the one with Danny Glover, Ray Liotta, and Dennis Lurie. Yeah, but they're trying to um, take out an elephant and and try to put it to a different location so it'll be safe with all the other elephants around. Yeah. And that movie came out in 1995. Just because it has the word Dumbo on there. Okay. Uh, but nevertheless, um, the movie was totally magnificent, and it holds up even to this day. I mean, despite of the the culture that's going around. But whatever it is, it's but whatever it goes, it's still magical, still memorable, and a wonderful classic. Anyway, let's get to the review. Now, yes, they were uncredited, but at least now we know who the voice actors were. Um, the movie stars Edward Brophy, Bernard Felton, Cliff Edwards, Herman Bean, Margaret Wright, Sterling Holloway, Billy Breacher, Dorothy Scott, Noreen Gamil, and John McLeish, which also has um, the Hall Johnson Choir and the King's Men joining in for the action. And which, by the way, uh, they were all recorded directly from the RCA system, which they use a Sonobox system that had their voices synthesized. So it's based on the book by Helen Aberson and Harold Pearl, which the story is written by Otto Eglanter, Joe Grant, and Dick Hummer. And it's directed by Ben Sharpstein, with some of the sequences directed by Norman Ferguson, Wilfred Jackson, Bill Roberts, Jack Kenny and Samuel Armstrong. The movie began set during the winter time, yeah, where everything was all raining, stormy, with a bunch of hail coming around. That's where we meet a flock of storks delivering their babies to the circus animals. 
within in winter quarters somewhere in Florida. All the mothers have received their parcels before departure, all except for a circus elephant named Mrs. Jumbo. But during the travel, as they headed to another location for the circus train, a lost stork brings in her elephant to their utter surprises of all the other elephants around, which are basically gossip girls. That's when we finally get to meet, which she actually names uh, this baby elephant, Jumbo Jr. And that's her son that she adopts which has extraordinary large ears. And that's when the elephant started to recule him, calling him Dumbo, the new nickname, which also includes elephant Matitrarch, who's the well-meaning but very pompous leader of the elephants. Yeah. I don't even know if I said her name right. It always bothers me. Anyway. But Mrs. Jumbo attempts to remain dignified and treats her child with all of material love. So, she really cares for him so much. Also, of course, Mrs. Jumbo doesn't speak much. She only says uh, the name so you don't really hear her talk but the rest of the elephants does anyway it only gets worse when they finally uh, landed straight to the particular location so they can hold the circus and you know <laughs> with the train uh, trying to get there as fast as they can you know I think I can I think I can I think I can <laughs> as you could hear the the, the, the train actually going um, they stop to that particular location, they're putting everything together, hoping things will go as smoothly as possible, and it did. <sighs> okay, but that's when we meet a group of rascals around, started mocking him in front of everyone, and that's when Mrs. Jumbo got totally furious that... She actually catch one of them, actually spanks him <laughs> with her nose, and then the circus rainmaster deems Mrs. Jumbo completely mad that, that she really went out of control and are trying to calm her down and stop her. So they handcuffed her uh, and then just put her straight into the cage yeah where it has a sign caution mad elephant so now she's stuck inside uh, for the rest of the entire uh, time while Dumbo is in tears you know crying uh, his eyes out so he's like all alone while all the elephants are just gossiping but meanwhile, we meet a small mouse named Timothy or Mouse, who's a, a very kind guy, you know, who just goes around trying to scare off uh, those elephants who's been saying nasty things about Dumbo. But he actually consults him and actually makes him a star, hoping that you know, he'll get the attention he'll deserve. Timothy decided to come up with his own plan to go straight into the ringmaster, you know, using him as his conscience to make Dumbo uh, start his first performance as, as an elephant pyramid stunt that the elephants are about to perform. You know, where they're all gained up on top of that ball that they have, hoping they'll stand up and be able to hang on to each other and and until Dumbo comes along and be able to be on top of him. But if but things just went completely wrong, because Timothy tries to help uh, Dumbo out, 
Yeah, he even has the the flag. Yeah, that says D. And but he was so nervous that he couldn't go. Just when Timothy just pokes the needle out of him, and he just ran as as he could, but then all the elephants just uh, try to hang on, but then they they pull apart. They went straight into the trapeze all around through the entire circus as it crashes all the way down to the halt. So everything fell apart. And then at the end, Dumble just raised the flag and it just broke. Didn't work out. So now the elephants, you know, they, they all got injured, you know, have all these casts on. And they just gossip once again, just continue to talk about what Dumble's performance is going to be next. And that's when we find out that he becomes a baby clown, which is the the firefighter clown act, his second performance. So that means um, the firefighters are about to take down the, a building structure that's in flames. So they're just trying to do their best to to save the baby <laughs> yeah because one of the one of them actually dressed up as uh, the baby's mother he was the clown so they did the best they could and and Dumbo was just so um, afraid of heights that he was trying to do his best to to jump all the way straight into the bucket of water and he did um, kind of felt embarrassed, but, but hey, he made it as he could. So, despite of his newfound, but despite of his newfound popularity and fame, Dumbo really dislikes the job and just wants to go back to his mother, Mrs. Jumbo. So that's why he's still in tears. So now he's becoming more miserable than ever. But to cheer him up, Timothy decided to take him to visit uh, Mrs. Jumbo, already in her cage. So they begin to see each other face to face, only by intertwining their trunks, the other nose. And that's where we hear the song, Baby Mine. But on the way back, Dumbo uh, started crying again. And then he starts to hiccup because, well, the boys were celebrating the Dumble success. Yes, all the clowns, you know, they were just, you know, getting dressed and they decided to celebrate just drinking some champagne. And then all of a sudden, they accidentally pour the rest of the champagne inside a bucket of water. So then both uh, Timothy and Dumbo decided to have a drink of water, but then they started uh, getting drunk as soon as they can. And that's when they started seeing some several hallucinations of pink elephants. Yeah. I I love that sequence that they put in in the movie. Um, I almost forgot to mention that the pink elephant scene was also featured in the live action version that Tim Burton did. But Dumble didn't get drunk. <laughs> no. Uh, but uh, they did actually did a performance where all the rest of the um, the artists have started to uh, throw in some bubbles around the entire uh, circus ring. So you started seeing all these pink bubbles all clear. Anyway. The next morning, Dumbo and Timothy are awakened by a group of crows. Yes, and this is what we're going to get to. They are very surprised to find out that an elephant is sitting on the highest branch of the tree. As they pass by, Timothy suddenly found out about that. As Dumbo had managed to achieve flight using his large ears as wings. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, the, the crows themselves, I mean, this is where they actually have that song, When I See an Elephant Fly. And they started to make fun of him at first. 
And that's when Timothy decides to tell them that they should be ashamed of themselves about what what Dumble feels. They shouldn't be treated like this. They shouldn't even be treated like dirt. So they didn't mean to. So they figured, you know, maybe they'll find a way. But then the crows had gained up. They they decided to find a better way to have Dumble fly was to actually take out a magic fetter that's coming from one of the crows' butts. <laughs> but they soon learned that it was just part of a gag. I mean, just when they started, to, just when we finally found out that Dumble can fly, soaring all the way up in the air, up into the sky, that that's when they finally did the same circus act as before. Um, the firefighter act. So now this time he actually does get to fly but Timothy warns him that part of this was just a gag. Just believe in yourself. Try to fly and he did. And he became more popular than ever before. That now we've been getting a lot of uh, newspaper reports that yes he's now becoming the world's flying elephant. And now just when they're about to arrive to the next uh, stop, you know, with the train going by and everything, yes, Dumbo finally gets to go back to Mrs. Jumbo, which they now had a special train uh, for them. And yes, that's where we still get to hear the song, the the reprise of of uh, when I see an elephant fly. So yeah, so now. So yes, they both have a private car for the uh, train and everything all set. So now they're getting ready for their next adventure as they continue. Yeah. Oh wow. Such a uh, magnificent uh, animated feature that Disney put out. I, I saw this movie ever since I was a kid. I remember we rented this movie a lot. I also saw it on TV as well when it was on, and it was fun. I mean, it was always cool to see Dumbo as different as every elephant can be, who has big flappy ears that that he can soar and go up in the air and everything. Plus, um, Timothy or Mouse, I mean, he's a very kind. Uh, Miles, who definitely helps uh, Dumbo out, you know, almost becoming his manager right there, if you think about it. And yeah, and he did become a manager later. So they're, they're like a great team together. And it really shows. And I love the crows. There's nothing wrong with the crows in the movie. I mean, it didn't bother me. It never did. I mean, they were cool. I mean, geez, I mean, that's the problem. You know, PC culture always seems to ruin everything that they touch. You know, and this is why we don't get Song of the South on Blu-ray. Yeah, no kidding. Not even DVD for that matter. So now we're stuck with um, copies floating around at certain places. Yeah, Disney's just not treating that movie with respect like they used to. But let's face it, man. That's what happens. Yeah, now I know why a movie like The Princess and the Frog is being overlooked. Yeah, I, I mean, it's sad that not many people talk about The Princess and the Frog. I mean, Dizzy just doesn't know how to handle that film. Yeah. Shame. Well, anyway... <laughs> But back to Dumbo, it was a huge success as it went around. The budget was only $950,000. This was pretty small for that budget, but it made only $1.6 million. I think by just, but I think by inflation, I think it would have been a lot higher than that. Think about that. 
but still, um, it's um, he had a lot of great music, all written by Frank Chichchill and Olive, um, Olivia, yeah, Oliver Wallace. Uh, you got a nice cast doing the voice acting, considering that they were uncredited. A uh, wonderful, uh, spectacular animation that they chose uh, for Disney, even though they did say they had some rough animation for a while. But they did the best that they could do, and it just looks just stunningly beautiful. And, you know, the sequences with the pink elephants was just amazing because it started to look more psychedelic. Almost um, trying to, to go straight into... Uh, the territory of House of Wonderland. Because, you know, in House of Wonderland, they had really psychedelic animation that they never forget. Um, so, yes, um, and this movie really did help um, recuperate the loss of Pinocchio and Fantasia not doing so well. That hoping that they'll try to recuperate from that and and it worked I almost wish the film did last a little bit longer than 64 minutes though but it's the best they could do I mean I understand I mean they could have added some more scenes here and there I mean I almost felt like you know <laughs> that um, the scenes where Dumble starts to fly seems rather a bit short so but that's at the end so, for the most part of the film, it's just about Dumbo trying to become you know, famous by joining in the circus, doing all these performances with the help of Timothy or Mouse. You know, put him in. And then, of course, it's about all the gossip with those girls, elephants, you know, you know just making fun of them. And, yeah, they were the ones that called them Dumbo, and then... You know, they're trying to say what, what's happening, so it just took us away from Dumbo and Mrs. Jumbo. Which is really cool because they, you know, they definitely got even with these girls. And, you know, like they, like for example, there's a scene where Dumbo starts to take out all these peanuts and starts to shoot all, all of them. They got what they deserve. The Dumbo did, got featured in, um... Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Not only was it based on the book, but it was also, believe it or not, was actually a novelty toy that they had, which is the world of book that they use. So, wow. <laughs> Didn't know they had that. And of course, like the Disney films at the time, they always had to use drug use. Like, for example, the leader of the crow has a cigar. And yes, they pour champagne, you know, the clowns alone inside the bucket of water and cause them to get drunk. Yeah. Kind of like the situation with Pinocchio, too, where you know they smoke cigars and they drink beer and they become donkeys. <laughs> oh boy, you know, Disney at the time was just. Yeah, they were really, I guess you could say they were adults, even though they were supposed to be for kids, for families everywhere, for those situations. Also the songs, of course, Baby Mine, The Clown Song, Pink Elephants on Parade, and When I See an Elephant Fly, <laughs> which also won the Academy Award for Best Original Song. So it really shows that they, this movie can be a winner. What can I say? I already said it already. It's a magnificent uh, animated classic that you'll never forget. Definitely believe in yourself. That's the key. So that's Dumbo from 1941 and I give it 5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.